Okay, welcome back to the program. This is Andrew Wiemet with local audio producer Sean Caffrey. Now, Sean, after listening to your beat, obviously you can tell that you put in a lot of work into all of your beats. Is there any specific beats that you remember that you have just seen as your favorite? That you're like, wow, I'm really proud of this and I want to show people it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said before, I work with this local artist, uh, Fitted, and his latest project is a mixtape that came out a few months ago. It's called Between Now and Forever, and I produced four songs on that, and two of them really stand out to me. One was I Miss You, and another one was called Monsters, and both of those tracks, I'm really proud of them. Just the the emotion that you can feel in, in the song and the quality of the production, I'm proud of those. See, that's good to have work that you're proud of. Absolutely. It's, it must be awesome to show people and then just see the reaction on their face when they love it. I think that's a great feeling for anybody. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What has been the most exciting part of your audio production career? I don't know, probably just meeting so many different kinds of people. I've traveled all up and down, you know, New York State and, you know, the East Coast, basically. Northeast, really. And just meeting different people and having conversations and talking about music and meeting people that have the same love for music and for art as you do. It's just, it, it's amazing. Now, if you were to give somebody some pointers about what they need to be a good audio producer, what would those pointers be? First, I would probably say, you know, do your research, especially with, you know, YouTube and the, the internet. It, it's just right there at your fingertips. There's so much to go and learn. I spend a lot of my time just looking up, you know, songs by different artists, any genre, just to get any inspiration of any type of song that I can. So yeah, I, w I would definitely recommend that. You definitely have to have a certain kind of ear for something like this. Um, it's funny because I like I'll be working on a beat and I'll have friends there, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll play a certain section. And I'll be like, oh, I need to tweak this, this, and this, and I'll play the same section over and over and over and over and over, and my friends will be like. Dude, it sounds the exact same every time you play it. And I can hear the difference. You know, I tweak something every time, but the average listener really can't. So you have to train your ear really to be tuned in to what you're doing and be able to hear all the variations and different instruments and things like that. So mm. definitely have to have a trained ear. Yeah. I mean, looking at something over and over again, it's like when I do editing for any video, I can look at something over and over and over again. People have said to me too, you're not really changing anything, but that little bit matters to you. Absolutely, so. definitely. Okay, so what are some natural traits that you feel a person should have to be an audio producer? Well, like I said, the trained ear is definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, you have to be driven. You have to be humble enough to say, all right, this specific thing isn't exactly working. Let me tear this all down. Let me try something else. You know what I mean? You just got to be able to, to push through the creative blocks and just do what you love. Relax and let it come. Yeah, you got to basically be in a zone, I feel when you're creating music just because music is so soulful and everything, like everything about it. You Absolutely. have to bring a bunch of things together to make good sound. Definitely. Yeah. If it's not good, it obviously doesn't sell. All right. So now let's talk about your future a little bit here. Sure. Okay. What are your future aspirations? Like, where do you want this to lead? Well, really, I'd like to make a living off of, you know, just being creative, making music, making art. Um, if I can live comfortably, just, you know, making music, then I guess that's really the ultimate goal. I mean, there, there's a bunch of different things I'd like to do. You know, I want to travel, I want to see the world. I want to work with, you know, a bunch of different artists. And there's different projects that I want to do before I'm out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's think about this real quick. Okay. What would your dream situation be? Like, if you could pick a rapper, an artist, or anybody in this world to work for. Work for? Yeah. Hmm, that's tough. I would probably say Eminem. And why is that? I mean, I've been a fan of his since, you know, the late 90s. And I can tell he's really in it just for the love of hip-hop and making music. And he doesn't seem like the type that would force me to make a certain kind of record just to sell records, just to make money. Yeah. You know, we would be in the studio just making music because we love it. That's the kind of person I want to work for. Yeah. I think our generation growing up with Eminem, I feel like he's pretty much been there the whole entire time. He's still even relevant now. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good choice. Absolutely. Now, if you could have one person to mentor you now, who would it be? One person, a mentor. Man, probably Kanye West. Just because, like, I respect him so much as a music producer, and the, the things that he's done are just amazing. I love to just sit and pick his brain. <laughs> would that be a person probably top on your list that you want to meet Absolutely. someday? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. That would be awesome. Huge fan. Obviously, creating music and everything, it, it can get tough sometimes, especially with, like, I mean, just life getting in the way. Yeah, yeah. Who's been your biggest supporter? My mom, probably. And what has she done for you? She's just always been there. You know, me and my mom are really close. I can call her basically whenever I want and just, you know, if I'm having a, 
a bad day or, you know, I just don't feel good, I'll call her up and she, she always makes me feel better. She's she's always believed in me no matter what. You know, she never looked at me like I was crazy when I told her I wanted to be a music producer, you know, for a living. She's just like, all right, I can tell that you really want that, so go for it, knock it out of the park. She's always just been there. Yeah. Always well, believed in me. Moms are an amazing thing. Absolutely. You know, you always have one person that'll always have your back no matter what you want to do, even if it sounds crazy. Yeah, definitely. All right. If one day somebody just told you you can't produce any more music, if you had to pick a new career to go into, what would it be? Oh, man. It would definitely have to be something creative. Um, I've always wanted to try acting. Really? Yeah. Just to, to be able to be somebody else, you know, as a living. Yeah. It just looks so much fun. It looks so cool. I've actually done a little bit of acting. Oh, really? Where? Locally. Just... uh. I've worked with this local comedian, Steve Sarsfield, and, you know, we've worked on different projects, different, you know, we've shot commercials and internet TV shows and stuff like that. There were real small parts, but uh, I could definitely see how, how people say you, you catch the acting bug. It's a blast, dude. So. You really enjoyed it, obviously. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've done some a little bit of acting and some things, too. I mean, I've always had fun with it. it. I always feel like you can always just bring out different personalities in yourself and stuff. Okay. Well, uh, are you currently working on anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always working on something. A couple of the artists I mentioned earlier, Boy Genius is coming out with a mixtape, I think, next month maybe? Maybe it's this month. I don't know. Pretty soon. I'm, I'm going to have a bunch of tracks on that one that I produced. Fitted is coming out with a CD in May, and that one is called Vacant Thoughts. That's what it's called. And all the tracks will be produced by me. The artist Neek, he's working on Kill 'Em All Volume 3, I believe. And I just sent him some tracks for that. My local DJ, Var the All-Star, he's working on a mixtape. So I sent him some tracks. Uh, like I said, working with Trizzy. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a bunch of things I'm working on right now. Yeah. Just trying to stay busy, stay relevant. So if one of these rappers hit it big, let's say all of them hit it big, mm -hmm. dream situation, which one would you want to go with and why? Oh, man, probably say Fitted. Because, I, I mean, I've been with him the longest. And, you know, that's my dude. He's a good friend. And we get along. I, I went on tour with him last spring. We had a ball. So if I were to go with anyone, I'd probably go with him. Yeah, do you feel like kind of a sense of loyalty to him? Absolutely. You guys been there. Talk to me about your relationship with Fitted. How long have you known him? A year and a half or so, maybe almost two years. Yeah. So what do you like about him? He's he's driven. He's He's real driven. He knows what he wants, and he's not afraid to just, you know, do what it takes to go get it. He's super, super honest, too. Like, if he doesn't like something, he'll tell you straight up, you know, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know, he doesn't let's do something different. He doesn't sugarcoat it, try to make it easier for you or anything. Absolutely. You know, and, and that stings sometimes, but I, I absolutely appreciate that. Like, it, it makes me a better artist, a better person, just, you know, just hearing that honesty. Yeah. Do you think honesty is probably something that everybody in that field should have? Ideally, yeah. I know where, at least where pop music is right now, there's a lot of disingenuous people out there, we'll put it that way. They seem to be out there just making music to make money. You know, they'll say anything on a record, even if it's not true. You know, I'm not a fan of that. I'm a fan of real music, honest music, and just, you know, being respectful to your craft. I wish more people would, would be as honest as fit it is. That's awesome. really is. I mean, it's good to work with honest people because then they tell you exactly how it is. They don't waste your time. That's got to be awesome to work with. Now, you just mentioned that a lot of people these days, they aren't exactly that honest or anything. Like who? Who who are you referring to when you say that? I know some big names like Drake and people that have problems with, but is there other people that you're thinking of? Or? I mean, Drake's one of them. And don't get me wrong, I like Drake's music. You know what I mean? He's a pop artist, though. I listened to his last album that came out, and I liked it, but only the tracks where he was being himself. Yeah, I you, know what you, you mean. You could tell, like, the singles that they played on the radio were completely different from the rest of the of the album. And he was saying things that just aren't true. You know what I mean? He said something about, hype me up and I'll catch a body. Like, that's not happening. You're not taking anyone out, Drake. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you feel like he's just lying, trying to get some money out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what I don't like. Rick Ross seems to be another type like that. He seems to be always just talking about, you know, selling drugs and how much money he has, which is fine. You know, if you have that money, then, you know, whatever. But if you're going to talk about money, if you're going to talk about drugs, be more clever. You know what I mean? That type of stuff has been done. And I don't know about you, but I really, I can't relate to having millions and millions of dollars blowing 10 grand at the bar in one night. I can't relate to that. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? When I hear lyrics like that, I, I think in my head, wow, you blew 10 grand at the bar. Come yeah. on. You really spent all that money that one night? Yeah, I yeah. guess I can see what you're saying now when it's like not that honest. I mean, I feel like old rappers back in the day, like Eminem, Run DMC, Jay-Z even, I feel like they were all a lot more real, especially with like Tupac and Biggie and how they died and everything. I feel like rappers today, 
kind of don't do it because they love what they're doing. I feel like they do it for the paycheck. I feel they do it for the fame. I feel that they do it for the power that they get over people. Absolutely. But. Well, you think about it, you know, 10, 20 years ago, hip hop was still fairly new and it was part of the counterculture. It wasn't like pop culture. You know what I mean? So it was kind of rebelling against the mainstream. And then all of a sudden it became mainstream. So, you know, where do we go from there? It's kind of a confusing time. But there's still real hip hop out there. You just kind of got to dig for it. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for coming in, Sean, today. I really appreciate it. It was an awesome interview. Thanks a lot. This is Andrew Wiemet broadcasting from Stroh's Internet Radio at the College of St. Rose, located in Albany. That was Sean Caffrey, and this is our goodbye. Bye. See you.